Welcome to Grace, Grace with Nina and Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphreys. And I am Nina Keegan. Welcome to the broadcast today. We are so happy you joined us. Today, we are going to be talking about you need to be bold in your asking. Whatever you are asking God for, it's time to step up your game, be bold, just keep asking and stand on what you're asking for. Amen, and God is always honored when we ask boldly. I mean, think about it. If, if your child comes up to you and asks you for something big, or what do you think? It's like, well, if you, you can to... do it, yeah. you're going to do it. And the Bible says, if we, being evil, give good gifts to our children, how much more will he give to us, right? Because he yeah. is the Father in heaven. And he has access to everything. I mean, think about it. His streets are made of gold. There is nothing that is impossible with God. The word Yahweh, which is one of the names of God, mm -hmm. means he who makes all things to be. So why wouldn't we ask boldly? God is eager to bless us. The Bible says that the blessings of Abraham are ours. And so Amen. if you ever Googled what Abraham's blessings were, he had the cattle and the gold and he was so richly blessed by God. And the Bible says he's so eager to bless us, but he wants us to act that way and to come from that place that it's already been accomplished, that God's already got everything for us because he has sent his son, Jesus. Jesus paid the price for what we already, everything we already need is already taken care of. Everything that we could ever need, want, ask has been done already for us. So we need to come boldly to the throne from a place of knowing that it's already been accomplished. Right. On the cross, mm -hmm. Jesus said, it is finished. And you know, everybody knows the shortest scripture in the Bible is Jesus wept, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And G the Bible says that we do not come to a mountain that cannot be touched. Amen. That we come from a place, our God knows how we feel because he walked as a human. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says when he, when he went to see Mary and Martha and, and Mary began to describe to him what happened to Lazarus. He had so much compassion that he groaned. The Bible says he wept and then he basically proceeded to ask boldly. He walked over to the, the tomb where he, Lazarus had been dead four days and they were warning him of the stench that it, it I think a funny scripture is, he stinketh. He stinketh. <laughs> he, so yeah, they were like, he's going to stink. And, and, and he was, you know, but that doesn't matter to God because nothing is too big for God. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what is dead in your life. It doesn't mean that, you know, I mean, people still do get raised from the dead, but what is dead in your life? Is, do you have dead relationships with your children? Do you have dead relationships with your spouse? Do you have a dead relationship with, uh, with someone that you used to be close to, but everything is just dead? Mm -hmm. You can pray just like Jesus did. The Bible says we have the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So what he did then, you can actually do now. And he is our example. And mm -hmm. basically, all he said, he didn't use many words. He didn't babble. He just said, Lazarus come forth. Yeah. And I've heard someone say that when Lazarus, if he wouldn't have called Lazarus's name, everybody could have come forth. Everybody right? could have. Yeah. But you know, I always think about that scripture when he said, when it says that Jesus wept. And I also think that because, you know, they were such close friends of Jesus, Mary and Martha, and they had seen him do many, many miracles. And yet sometimes I think, was he really, uh, sad and crying because they didn't have the faith, even though they had seen him perform many, many miracles. And yet they did not believe they already thought it was too late. And mm -hmm. that, you know, Lazarus, uh, you know, had, was, it was just too late. He was dead. And so they never had the faith in their own friend that they had seen perform many, many right. miracles. And yet they did not believe or think that he cared. They right. thought he did not care. He just didn't show up on time. And so he wept. And so, you know, we need to come to that place. Like 
Jesus was sad because his friends weren't coming from a place of boldness, declaring that we know who you are and that you have every power to raise our brother from the dead. They weren't Amen. coming from that place. And that, that made Jesus very sad. And, and that still stands today. If you are saved, if you are born again, then you have all of that power. It says, as Jesus is, so are we in the world. And we can come boldly to the, to the throne room of grace and ask and, and never stop Amen. asking and come from a place of knowing in your heart that it is already finished. When you boldly pray and ask, then you stand on that. Amen. Then you don't waver. You don't give up. You don't speak the opposite and say, it's too late. God's not going to answer my prayers. I guess I've prayed wrong. I didn't yeah. pray enough. You know, it's not about us. It's about knowing and understanding and having the faith and the boldness of asking and knowing who your father is and what he wants to do in your life. Right. And sometimes we just need to stop and get alone with God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I believe that one, it, it does say, the Bible says that when we say to the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. But I believe that our mountain has to hear our voice. Yes. And, and sometimes when I'm praying and I need some, something big from God, and it's really none of it is big for God, but to me it seems big, yeah. right? So when I'm praying, I remind my mountain how very big God is. And I, I like the prayer in Nehemiah 9. He's mm -hmm. praying and he has a big wall to build. He has a big job to do. And he has a lot of, uh, of tension coming uh, from mm -hmm. other political parties. And it, it's just a mess at that point. So he begins to call on God and he says, Nehemiah says, you alone are the Lord. He's yes. talking to his mountain. Mm -hmm. You have made the heavens with it and, and the heavens and their entire host, the earth and all that is in it, mm -hmm. seas and all that is in them. And you give the light to all of them and the heavenly host bows down before you. So, okay, if all of heaven is bowing to the one you're praying to, mm -hmm. then what in the world or why wouldn't we be bold, right? Well, why are we praying from a place of knowing that there's a scripture that says, if we know that God hears us when we pray, right? why else would we pray if we don't know that God's listening and that he hears us and that every prayer the Bible says in Daniel that he immediately sends angels are dispatched the minute we pray. But in Nehemiah, I so love that story because if you go back to the beginning, he was a cupbearer to the king. And a cupbearer was not even supposed to show you emotion could be killed. in front of the king. If you showed emotion in front of the king, you it was it was punishable by death. And yet the king saw something was wrong and asked him why he was sad. And yet instead of shrinking back and saying, I'm fine, I'm not sad, like knowing he could die by showing this emotion, mm -hmm. he boldly asked, but it says that he prayed first. He says he prayed to his God in heaven first. And then he- While he's standing in the presence yes. of the king, that's a scripture that I like to yes, stop on. because he could have- It's like a, a quick prayer. Yeah. Like I'm sure it may have been in his head. You know, Bold, he went yeah. to pray to his God like in heaven first. And quick. then not only we're talking about being bold in your prayers, but he started asking. He started saying, you know, the land of my father's tomb, it's in it's in ruins that I would like to build the wall. And he begins to ask for everything he needs. And and what I love about this, it says that the, he found favor with the king. The king did not only give him what he asked for, but he gave him so much more because when God's in it, God knew that he would set Nehemiah in that place to be the cupbearer, to earn the king's, uh, he was loyal, the king knew him, that he would have that respect and that, that friendship with the king, that the king, would, it would, he was strategically placed there to be able to come later and ask for all he needed to go be strategically used by God to rebuild this wall. But he asked for everything. He asked for the materials. He asked for the, the letters to get through the forest, to be able to pass through the areas. And then the king was going to lose a trusted servant for years mm -hmm. while he went off to do this job too. Right. 
And so he got not only what he asked for, but the king gave him so much more. That's God's exceeding abundance. When we don't back down, when we're not afraid, again, he could have gotten killed for this. Right. And yet he boldly asked because when God's in it, you never know whose prayer God is using you to be part of, to, an, to be a, an answer to someone's prayer. When you go beyond and be, be powerful in your prayers and in your asking, instead of backing down, you may be part of something so big that God wants to use you for, just like Nehemiah, but he did not back down, but he prayed big, bold prayers and he trusted God. Amen. And you know, thinking about that, like asking for a bold prayer, Isaiah, you know, when, when you go back and you read Isaiah, there's a part in a point in Isaiah's life where he saw the Lord. And the Bible says that he saw the Lord and, and he was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah was standing in the presence of God. There's a scripture that says, set the face of the Lord before you, yes. which you can do when you pray. Set, just think about that. Think about whatever's good, whatever's pure, whatever's holy. Think about what Isaiah saw. Think about the Lord that is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. And the Bible says that he will direct your, your path and it will make it straight. Some of us are looking and praying and asking God for direction. And, and it just seems so big because you don't know what to do. In fact, it's sort of like paralysis by analysis. You think about, I could do this or I could do this. And I, I really don't know what to do. And you know what? God will tell you exactly what to do. Pray Amen. boldly to the Lord. It says if you, if you ask him for wisdom, he will give it to you without finding Liberally. fault. Liberally. Yes. He'll give you exceeding abundance. That's what I love. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 3.20 that God will do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask or think. And we so can if think you ask stuff. big and you think big in the first place and he's going to do exceedingly abundantly more, you know, why are we ever setting limits on God when it says that, you know, may, maybe you need um, a raise, maybe you need some more money to get by with your expenses. Instead of saying, can I just have this little bit of raise? Why don't you be so bold in your asking and say, God, I want to manage this place. I want to, I want to, you know, give me the best position. I, I would like, you know, everything that you have for me. God doesn't want us to just barely get by. Exactly. He's not a, he's a more than enough kind of God. Everywhere in the Bible where God showed up to bless, like in even in the wedding with Mary, when they were asking for wine, it just flowed. And when the oil with Elisha, and it was the best wine. It was the best wine. You know, the oil never stopped flowing. And when Elisha was with the widow until he did not have the capacity to contain it anymore. God is always the more than enough. He has the exceeding abundance of what you need, but he wants you to be bold and know that he is your loving father and he wants to give it to you. It Amen. blesses him to bless you and it blesses him for you to ask him, knowing that he loves you. Exactly, and, and you know, going back to Isaiah, you know, it was Isaiah, in Isaiah 53, five, it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Mm. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. How many of us have transgressions that we feel like are too big for mm -hmm. God? You think, I can't ask God, that's too bold. Yes, he was wounded. His blood flowed from that mm -hmm. cross for our transgressions. And it and for our he was bruised for our iniquities. A bruise is an inside bleed, and an iniquity is an inside sin. Mm -hmm. And 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 the chastisement of our peace. How many of us are walking around and we don't have peace? We're Christians and we don't have peace. God, Jesus was chastised for our peace on that cross. It is ours for the asking. Be bold Amen. and ask for that peace. Be bold and ask God to lift off that yeah. depression off of you and, and to lift off that despondency that you feel and that hopelessness that you feel. Jesus, he was chastised so that you could have peace. Amen. And by his stripes, we are healed. What do you have? That's not past tense. What Exactly. That's now. Exactly. I, I just um, was able to have, to spend a, 
I, I went to an, a Family Research Council conference in Colorado, and, and Andrew Walmack was there. And we love him. We love Andrew Walmack, and he's so precious, and, and he wants to help America, and I just love that he was there. And, you know, I can't, when I think about miracles and asking boldly, mm -hmm. I just think about how, you know, his son was pronounced dead. He was in the morgue. He had a toe tag. And I mean, they pulled him out of the drawer. He had been dead for hours. And he used the boldness and the power of Jesus. And he, he prayed for his son to be raised from the dead in the name of Jesus. And that man lives. He got up. He has children. And I mean, that's a miracle. And, that, and there's so that much is, documentation yes. on this. This is not hearsay. This is, I know a exactly. lot of people think, okay, really? I'm telling you, there are doctor's reports on this. This is 100% a documented miracle, you know, by morgues, morticians, doctors, and everybody involved. Like mm -hmm. it is a 100% documented miracle. But you know, how many of us actually believe when the Bible says greater things will you do than even Jesus did himself? Because we have Jesus sitting at the right hand of his father, interceding for us, praying Amen. on our behalf. We have the Holy Spirit in us. The disciples had to go find Jesus. Amen. We don't. We have 24 hours, seven days a week. We, are, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have the power. We can walk in the power and the anointing of being able to do these things. But we need to believe and not doubt and go boldly and know that when you Amen. ask, when you come boldly to the throne with, with faith, all you need is faith of, faith of a mustard seed. And I know that God says, the Bible says that God has given us all a measure of faith. Yes. And so we know we can even ask for more of that. Be bold in your asking for, for more faith, to strengthen your faith. But when you know and believe and know what you have available to you, you can ask and you can declare and then Amen. don't doubt. If you don't see the results right away, don't back down. You stand and you keep declaring, I thank you, Lord, that this is going to manifest. I thank you, Father, that this is happening. You, you get, you know, I think we need to be aggressive in our boldness and we need to bind the things that we're seeing, buying the depression and buying exactly. these things and forbid them from being part of your life and come to a place where you know that you know that you know that God is for you. He is not against you and he wants you whole. He wants you blessed. He wants you healed. He wants you prosperous. He wants you strong. He's your healer, your comforter. He's your light. He is everything you need and he wants you blessed. Ask. Ask. Keep asking. Right, and in 1 John 5, 14 through 15, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. It is, I mean, we just need to believe God like a little kindergartner. Why would you ask? Right. If you didn't believe he was there listening and wanting to, to, to bless you. You know, it is a conversation, a constant, continual conversation. God is not just some guy that you just call up when you need something. How would you like that if that's the only time a friend called you or one of your children wanted you around as if they wanted something? God is your friend. He's your he's your he's closer than your breath. He wants a relationship with you that's all day. You can pray constantly, incessantly. Well, and, and we don't have to worry about asking him. He wants to bless us. Yes. He wants to give us good gifts. We um, Can I just stop and have tell a David story? David is my little grandson. I have one grandson. Oh, my gosh. And he's he's adorable. And he has black curly hair. He is so cute. I think he's adorable. He's well, so cute. He pretty much whatever he asked of his grandparents, we're going to try to figure out how to give David these gifts. He calls her game all. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we, we were at the store the other day. We were getting shoes because he was going to be a ring bearer in a wedding. And we got these dress shoes out to go with his little outfit. And he was like, these shoes are not for David. He did not, <laughs> <laughs> he did not want to wear dress shoes. He's like, I want the, I want the uh, Paw Patrol shoes, and which blinked, of course, you know, because all, Light cool, up and yeah, all cool, cool shoes, shoes when you're three blink. And so, of course, you know, we bought him the shoes that we had to buy, but we also bought him the shoes 
that we could buy. Exceeding you know, abundance. <laughs> exactly. Because Exceeding he asked you boldly. Blinking <laughs> abundance. Yes, because he asked. And it's so funny. He's just, you know, whatever he asks of us, we're going to figure it out, right? Yes. And God feels even more about us. And he loves us so much. I can't imagine that he could love us more than we love David. I, it and just think seems about impossible. That because his love is perfect. You know, we're all flawed. And so, you know, but his love for us is perfect. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. I mean, I love your story. David is hysterical, this little boy. He has but a funny I, personality. I love this story about, you know, when you're reading the Bible stories to him, that when the walls of Jericho fall down, he yes. doesn't like the mess. You no, know, he's a very neat kid. His mom is very organized. So he, he, when I was telling him about, about telling him about Jericho, he said, "Ooh, they make a mess." You know, when the walls when, fell down, he doesn't like the rubble. <laughs> that, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So he's so funny. But anyway, I digress. But not really. Yeah. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. Uh, you know, you know, in James four two three, it says, "You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on pleasures." So when we ask boldly, when we go boldly to the throne of grace. We can ask for whatever the Bible says we can have, but just make sure you have a heart in the right place that you're asking because, you know, we are blessed to be a blessing. You right. know, God blesses us so that we can bless others and we can be a constant blessing. You know, the Bible says it is so much better to give than to receive. And that really blesses us. It's so fun to give. And when you know that you're helping others and, you know, God puts us you know, in that place, he, he gives us that for a reason that we get so happy when we are giving. But, you know, just make sure that you check your heart on that and that you're asking with right motives. You know, God isn't, you know, like some holy Santa Claus right. that, you know, you're not just going to sit up there. Well, I'm going to boldly ask for, you know, a Lamborghini. I mean, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about all the things that you stress about and worry about and the day to day things that you need in life. God doesn't want you to struggle. God wants to bless you. And, you know, you cannot outgive God. And so Amen. when you do what the Bible says to do, when you tithe and when you give and when you do all that you know to do, pray, stand, worship, praise him and seek him for all things. And then know that he wants you blessed and he is so there ready to bless you. And he's going to take care of those things. For right. You. And, and, you know, when we're trying to check ourselves, yeah, there there's a scripture in Ephesians six eighteen. It says, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Yeah. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So when we ask the Lord, when we get before the Lord, I would encourage you to, the Bible says, shut the door. Yep. Don't do it in front of man to be seen by man. Mm -hmm. Get alone. Be quiet with the Lord and pray in the Spirit. And when when I say pray in the Spirit, I, I pray in the Spirit uh, through tongues. I pray in tongues in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I believe that God hears me. I don't know exactly what I'm saying, but I'm also praying in my mind. And I'm often writing down what I'm thinking because often it is direction or right. it is a warning or it is, a, it is something ab about what is going to mm -hmm. happen. You know, and so... Get alone with God. It is priceless. It's, it, he says that what you do in that quiet time when no one's looking, he will reward you openly. Yeah. He will reward you openly. He, God just loves you. He, you are his child. You are his beloved. And he so wants to bless you. So just get alone with him. Spend time with him. The Bible says he will order your steps. And I love that because you don't have to worry about tomorrow. It says, in fact, Amen. the Bible says not to. Do not worry about tomorrow today for today has enough. Just let God take you day by day, step by step and work it out. Because we get too ahead of ourselves and then sometimes our problems or our needs seem so monumental and huge. 
and it, and it doesn't seem possible, and then we become overwhelmed. But if you just stop and take it little by little and just start praising God and then start thanking him, I thank you that you are providing, you are, you, you are gonna prosper everything I touch. Amen. You're gonna take care of everything. You are my healer. You know, when you just start coming from a boldly asking and from a place of thanksgiving, yes. pray and ask with thanksgiving, prayer and thanksgiving. Amen. And then, you know, he's really gonna take care of everything. You know, that's just how he is. He just wants to hear from you. Exactly, and, and, it, and the Bible says, call to me and I will tell you great and mighty things, things that you do not know. And that's what we wanna do today. Amen. We're gonna pray for everyone in our audience around the world and on radio and on the internet. And we're just thankful that you guys watch and we thank you Amen. that you listen. And we're just going to believe God and ask him boldly to do something great in your life. We don't know exactly what that is, but we're just going to ask the Lord. God to, knows. Exactly. He knows. And we're going to come into agreement knowing one will send a thousand to flight and two ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So let's believe and agree for your situation, and we're going to ask God boldly. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we call upon you right now, and we ask you that you will do something great and mighty in, in everyone who's listening and watching life right now. In Jesus' name, God, we don't know exactly what that is. We pray for healing. Yes. We pray for people to be yes. filled with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that uh, people would, would uh, just have revival fall upon them like tongues of fire right now, God. We pray, Lord, that family relationships would be healed, that marriages that were broken would be uh, repaired, God, and restored. Yes. We pray for financial situations, God, that you will make a way where there seems to be no way. In Jesus' name, Lord, call people to give. We ask you, Lord, that you will do great and mighty things, Father, whatever it is, even if Amen. somebody is on their deathbed, Lord, we speak to them right now. We say, be healed Arise. in mm -hmm. the name of Jesus. Amen. Rise up. In Jesus. in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand in agreement with that, knowing that God wants to bless you. And I just felt when we were praying about strongholds, just declare yes. strongholds to be gone, just to break free from the chains. God wants you delivered. You are the righteousness of Christ, and that means final deliverance. And Amen. so thank you so much for watching our broadcast today. We are so happy you joined us. Head on over to ninaandmichelle.com and Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle over on Facebook. There's daily devotions there. Also, Nina Keegan Ministries on Facebook. We love to hear from you. There's things you can read. You can watch past episodes. We just want to hear what God's doing in your life. We love you guys. We love you. God bless you. God bless you guys.